This question is from Paula. In the age of Zoom, what are your thoughts on virtual backgrounds and what advice do you have regarding gestures and the virtual speech environment? Well, thank you for that question. I want to just wave my hands all around and show you how excited I am. Oh, wait, am I waving them too fast? Do they look blurry? Mm, I think when you're on Zoom, you need to really make slower, smaller, concise hand movements, gestures. If you're happy and you want to wave your hands around, maybe like this instead of going like this, because more you move, the harder it is to really focus and see. With a Zoom background, depending on what it is, I'm gonna show you a couple different ones, you can tend to disappear. Like sometimes you can wave your arm and it can be seen, but there's other times where your fingers disappear or they seem like you're having webbed fingers or part of your arm totally is gone. So I would highly recommend not using Zoom backgrounds, especially during contests. During a contest, I'm actually in my bedroom, so you don't want to see my bed, but what you want to see is something that's clear and simple behind you. You don't want a lot of bright colors. You don't want a lot of busy things behind you. Something simple like a bookcase, like Jerry has behind him, or maybe something very simple, even easier of a wall behind you that really doesn't have much on it, maybe just a picture or two. But your best, your best bet when you're in a contest is to not have a Zoom background on at all. Even if you do, if you have the blur, it still does the same thing that a Zoom background would have. It blurs your background, but it also can distort the image. So to me, and from what TI has told us at our district training that we just had last week, for contests, they said, you're best not to have any kind of artificial or Zoom background behind you. Have a solid wall or have very few and simple pictures or photos behind you. Some people will put a sheet behind them. Some people will just put a curtain behind them. The simpler, the better. And as far as Zoom, you wanna make sure that you do use the stage just like you do in person. You can come up close to make a point. You can go further back. You could have larger pictures or you can go down and shrink depending on what you're saying, how you wanna convey your message. Use Zoom to the best of your ability. There's so much you can do. The winner of not this past year, but the year before, he tried something different. He peeked around the side and he came in this way. I can't quite do it the way he did it, but it made it different. Like Jeremy was saying before, try something different, try something unique. Use your platform, which is this little, what people call Brady Bunch squares, but use your Brady Bunch square to the best that you can. Make sure that it's clear behind you and that you are clearly visible and you want them to see your whole face. You don't want your head cut off and you don't want to see just your chin and you certainly just don't want the top of your head or any kind of light or fan shining or twirling behind you. Check your Zoom surroundings, practice, Find out what looks good and what doesn't. When I first came on, I didn't have a light. And so I was dark. So I went and got a light, made it so much better. Experiment with it, test it before the contest begins. So you will have more confidence and you won't have to worry about how you look. You just focus on what you're saying and how you're saying it. 